when we got the phone call and email for Enzo, we just knew that we had to do something immediately. It was in July. It was like super duper 110 degree heat. We basically got an email about this dog that was abandoned in a rental property. It was the property management company that contacted us. And then, so we just kind of put a shout out to all of us. And me and Gina, of course, we're kind of the dream team or the zoo crew as we call it. And we just went and the backyard was open and we went back there, just picked him up. He wasn't barking, nothing. He was super duper skinny, probably like 30 pounds, all skin and bones with just sores everywhere. Like his skin was so raw that it was just bleeding and cracked. There's poop everywhere in the backyard. There was actually a bed and it was on top of a trash can so he couldn't even get to it. And then there was like an empty bowl of water. And the property management company said that the water had been shut off for at least 10 days. So he obviously didn't have water either. When Enzo was found, um, he was found by a gardener that was hired by the property management company. Um, basically, the renter that was living there went MIA. They couldn't get a hold of him. He stopped paying rent there. Uh, it was in the middle of July, so of course it was like 110 degrees, I think, that day. And the water had been shut off the week prior because the person just uh, vanished and stopped paying bills. So we took him straight to Abbey Hospital from there and gave him a can of food, put him in a crate, and he was like, an angel. I called him the rock dog because he looked like a piece of stone, like a skeleton made out of stone. Um, his, his skin was just so um, calloused and bleeding and scabby and it just looked like a, a gray stone rock. And then on top of that you have every bone in his body just sticking out. And so it was definitely like you, you look at him and you would kind of be taken back for a minute because it's amazing that he was able to continue walking around and living the state that he was found in. It was just, I don't know, it's adrenaline, it's exciting, but you're really sad for obviously the dog and like astonished at what like people are capable of, you know, we're kind of the monsters and all of it and it's really sad. Uh, well, when I first met Enzo, he was a whole lot skinnier than he is now. He had 132 less hairs than he does now. Um, and he wasn't as comfortable as where he is now. He's the definitely the worst we've ever seen. We've gotten, you know, a ton of puppies with mange, um, even adults, but he's got so much scar tissue that it's really hard to treat his mange. So it's been over a year, and we've tried a couple different treatments now for his mange. This one that he's on now is working better. His story reached more people than any other rescue story we've ever um, come across. People from all over the world uh, caught on Enzo's story, Enzo's story and were shocked by his state as well and wanted to help. So it was pretty inspiring. Um, the local news stations took him on as a story and he was one of the first um, dogs that we were able to actually prosecute an owner. I don't know, those stories do kind of keep you going, keep you motivated and especially for him because I think it's rare that you find the owner that did that to a dog so I think it was a little bit more gratifying um, to kind of like see you know him a little bit of justice anyway not enough but you get at least a little bit and I think it's just amazing how cruel people can be to dogs in general but the bully breed pit bulls especially get treated the worst um, I don't know if it's because people think that they feel no pain it seems that uh, some of the people that own them don't have the best intentions whether they, they want to use them for security or um, a guard dog or they forget to feed them or they keep them chained up outside. Um, you know, we just see some pretty horrible things with this breed. It's always like a day-to-day -day struggle with him. Um, recently he had a prolapsed rectum, which is, was terrifying for everyone here. Um, and he's still kind of struggling with that a little bit, and we believe part of it is from when he was super malnourished. So he's still dealing with that, still recovering from his mange. It's gonna be probably like a lifelong battle for him, but he's happy and he's pretty healthy right now, so we're just keeping him going. Uh, Enzo's story is kind of like the poster story for FBR, you know? He's kind of like the mascot, and so it's good that 
a lot of people are hearing his story and um, it helps explain and show what we do here and um, the the rewarding part of it is just seeing his change.